Hello, uh, my name is Jared Allen, and with me is Ray Rose Hayward, we're from PhD Design, and we're here to present the Tate Gippsland Mortal Trade Skills Centre. Uh, so, in the early part of the 20th century, um, commerce and industry in the Latrobe Valley was growing, uh, culminating in the 60s with more at the town of Millwell as the centre of this fossil fuel boom. <coughs> However, privatisation of the power plants in the late 80s led to a lot of uh, unemployment and social tensions, uh, which, as often happens in history, in the uh, 2014, the closing of the Morwell power plant brought a lot of these issues back to the surface. Um, so as we can see here, sitting on the boundary between residential and industrial zones of Morwell in the Gippsland high-tech uh, precinct, Tafe Gippsland uh, campus acts as a physical and metaphorical threshold that acts, uh, acts as a link for the community's past, present and future. So the project, uh, it started with a client and a budget, but that's it. We didn't have a brief um, to work with or to respond to, just a vision of a facility where students could have everything they need to excel. Uh, the existing TAFE Gippsland facility model was decentralised, uh, with most of the trades having separate facilities spread around the Greater Gippsland area, and the plan was to bring these together uh, at a few centralised sites, like this one here, which is the Morwell campus. Working with the management staff, uh, we ran a number of workshops to take the project budget, work out how, uh, first work out the area we could actually build, uh, and then we started looking at uh, what arrangement of trades would be best co-located um, and see if there was efficiencies in the overlapping facility requirements, uh, shared curriculum units and real-world trade relationships where a shared understanding of practices and hazards would be beneficial. Uh, we also looked at precedent TAFEs and their existing facilities and bringing that all together we determined where the new building was going to sit on the existing site. And as we can see here, the final position uh, was formerly used as a car park and a small administration building, um, sitting centrally in the site, which we saw as an opportunity to change how that like, change fundamentally change the character of the whole area. So the orientation and connections of those existing buildings uh, led to a new campus hub being formed between the western facade of the new facility, which you can see here and the existing tech building, which is just out of shot. Uh, this became a key design element moving forward that influenced how uh, issues were addressed as they occurred, such as heat and solar heat loads, natural light ingress, um, that the team had to consider as we, the final design came to be. So honoring an industry rich culture. So as noted by Jared, there's a key history of more well, which we acknowledge and we see it in the lens, not, necessar not necessary to repeat, um, but to honor. There is a spectrum of these industrial historical typologies representing more well's past. And we sought the opportunity again, not to necessarily repeat, but to reinvigorate and reinvent um, this imprint of history. So this section and elevation illustrates our ambition to create the sort of airy and lightweight depiction of a well-defined shed. Um, you can see in the roof form its modern interpretation of a sawtooth roof, um, which we've drawn from those previous typologies. In this photo, you can see the expression of that sawtooth roof and how it draws back down to the scale of the pedestrian. Um, internally, there's a large workshop, so um, this also allowed indirect natural light and ventilation as its traditional purpose. So um, in this image, you can see the sort of the expansion and the contraction of the building form to try and transform this sort of rectilinear shed into um, a delicate but yet industrious form, sort of the, the next chapter of the mall shed. Um, and whilst we see the opportunity to beacon this history, we also recognise the objective of the project is the investment in youth, um, a space for the community to come and engage with current and future trades is the backbone of this project. So in addressing this, I'm going to take through some of the programmatic spatials um, of the project, but also delve into the not so typical learning environments <coughs> we were able to create using the building itself and its operational functions. Um, 
the plan here so it shows the, the trades and general classrooms sort of revolving around the trades workshop, which is the, sort of the heart of the building. This is also apparent in this section. So starting at the front there, you've got those general purpose classrooms and then in the center, the, um, the workshop. And you can also see how we tried to create some sort of verticality with um, visual connections, which is also apparent in this image here. So, you know, the workshop stands as the internal centerpiece of the project um, and you are visually connected back to the rest of the building. Um, sort of trying to break down the silo based approach to trade training. So as I alluded to, as designers, we saw um, prospects to leverage the building as a learning tool, exposing the structure, skin, services, and the like to act as educational devices representing various trades. We introduced segregated thermal zones, which meant in certain places we didn't require thermal coverings. So here you can see um, how the services are completely exposed to utilize them as a learning resource. Consequently, we could also reduce the building's energy consumption. The ability to upskill future skills will see the need to not only meet mandatory trade practices, but to enable students to better react to evolutional change. So what is our role in that? Despite an industrial history, the project presented opportunities to explore green power and skills. Um, so for example, with TAFE, um, we collaborated and we opted to incorporate solar panels into the building design um, and these panels would connect to accessible batteries serving as a resource to um, teach construction and electrical trades um, relevant renewable energy. So to, st to string this all back together, um, this project has been a journey seeking to redefine more well, redefine TAFE and define future skills. Through collaborative efforts and innovation, we sought to revitalize the area, um, honoring its industrial past while embracing a sustainable future. Um, also to note, the project was delivered on budget and within the projected timeframe um, in regional Victoria um, during COVID and associated lockdowns. Um, so we, we, we have pride in the final outcome, and that comes back to the end user. Um, TAFE Gibson now have a landmark facility which has reacted and adapted to its needs, which we have delivered as part of our role as architects. Thank you.